everybody. I wanted to talk about define method in Ruby, which allows you to uh, dynamically add new methods to objects. Um, so the place that you might have seen this before if you work with Rails is with the enum helper or the enum helper. So if you have like, maybe you have a model that's called like event or something and it tracks your, uh, your webhook notifications and maybe that inherits from some active record base. Uh, we'll just say model base for now. Um, that's not a real thing, but we'll go implement that. And then you, you might have um, run across this enum helper, which itself takes in uh, the name of the field. So in this case, it might be like status. Uh, and that would point to um, either, I think it's either a, a dictionary where the, um, the keys point to the value in the database, or it might also just be uh, an array here where the index into the array is with the, which value is actually stored in the underlying database. But I wanted to talk through how you might implement this with enum, or I'm sorry, with, uh, with define method. So if we have some status here, uh, and let's say that it's, uh, it takes in you know pending and then um, success and then failed or something, right? These might be common statuses that you would have on some event. And then ideally what we can do is we can call like um, event is equal to event.new. And then we could say something like event.status is equal to pending. So we could set the status this way. And we could also print out the event.status here and that would print out pending. So this is kind of where we wanna to get to initially. Um, and so if we ran this right now, this is gonna fail because well, of a couple of reasons. For the first is that we don't actually have a model base defined yet. Uh, and the second is that uh, status isn't a method on event. So um, let's first define model base, class model base. And then we'll run this again. We're gonna just use like sort of error driven development here, EDD. E uh, so undefined method enum for event class. So let's add that into the model base in case we wanted to use this enum thing for other models. So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna define a class method because here, when we're, when we're calling the enum method inside of the class body, this is not inside of an instance, this is, at, this is a class method on event. And we can define it in the model base because we're, our event is gonna inherit from model base. So we say self dot enum, and this is where we define, we're gonna define what enum accepts. Um, and I'm gonna have this accept in uh, just like a, a bag of keyword arguments. Um, and so initially what we can do, let's actually just run this again. And we'll see that now we're, fa we're failing because uh, there's no method defined status equals. So there's no setter, there's no setter method on event, right? So status equals. But uh, let's look at just what um, keyword arguments is. And it should just be this dictionary here with um, one key being status and one value being this list of symbols. So if we print out keyword, key, <laughs> keyword arguments uh, and then run this again, we don't actually get any because, let's see. Um, okay, here we go. Status, pending, uh, success, failed. So this is the dictionary that comes in. So I wanna pull off status as, um, as one of the, or, or, or as the value. So we kinda wanna loop over the keyword arguments in case for some reason there was uh, you know, multiple of these enums passed in. Maybe you have like status and then you have some other thing that has like values X and Y. Um, theoretically, you could support multiple enums. For now, we're just gonna use one and I'm gonna loop over the keyword arguments with each, do key and val. Okay, so key is gonna be status. And the first thing we wanna do is use define method to define a new method on, um, on the instance called status equals. So we wanna define this setter method. So we can say define method here, define method, and then we wanna pass in status equals. Um, and so status is in the key, and then we just add an equal sign after it to, to make it a setter method. And uh, technically this block, when you call a setter method like this, um, you're actually passing an argument, and the argument is whatever you're, whatever you're passing on the right-hand side. So we're gonna set the value, uh, or pass an argument to our block called like, um, you know, v. Right, that's the value that we want to actually set. Um, and then uh, here what I wanna do is create a new instance variable with the same name. 
Um, so instance variable set. Now you might in practice want to call this something special so it doesn't collide with other instance variables. So you might set it to like underscore underscore and then the name of your key or some such. I'm just gonna keep it simple and name the instance variable the same as the key so that event will actually have like an instance variable called status. Uh, and then we'll pass V as the value. So um, when we call, like when we call this enum method, um, passing in status, that will dynamically define a new status equals method. And when you call status equals, it will set the value of an instance variable called at status to the value on the right hand side. So let's, uh, let's run this and see how that works. Okay, so we have no output yet, um, that's fine. What I wanna do is let's p event and let's see what we get here. Okay, so we do have, we have an event object and you can see in the output of the event that it has this instance variable called status and its value is pending. And if we wanted to change this to like success, we could do so. And then if we ran this, you would see the status is now success. So one thing we could do to improve our setter is to, is to check to make sure that the values we're trying to set are in the valid set of statuses. So we could say something like if um, uh, quarks at key, actually this is gonna be values, right? So if we, if we just say like if uh, values.include v, then set it else um, uh, raise like, I don't know, some no, <laughs> uh, no, not a valid status or some such. Um, and then we can put in which status they tried to set. Okay, so if we run this again, we see the same thing because success is a valid status. What if we tried to set it to like blob or something? If we run this, we should get an error. And we do, we see an error. It says no valid status uh, blob. It's a runtime error. Okay. So this is how we define the setter. While we're looping over this, we might as well also write a method for retrieving the status so that we can call this event.status. So right now, if we try to run this, we're, um, well, blob isn't valid, so let's say pending. Um, and then if we run this, we see uh, there is undefined method status. Uh, did you mean status equals? So we haven't actually defined the status getter so we can do that um, like this, and we can just pass in, um, in fact, we can just pass the key um, here. And then we actually, this, so a getter method does not accept any arguments. And uh, we don't need to raise any exceptions or anything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say instance variable get, and then we're gonna pass in um, the name of that instance variable. Again, that's gonna match this name here. So if we run this, now we should see our status uh, coming out instance variable get define method. Um, we're missing end of input. What's going on here? Um, did I copy too many ends? Uh, oh, I'm missing a do. Okay. All right. So let's run this again. Okay. And we see pending. So that's that's great. We're, uh, we're getting back the status that we just set, right? So we set it, uh, we set the status to pending here, and now we're reading that back. So if we're looking, here we're looking at the documentation for active record. Um, in the active record API for enum, right, you can say conversation.active with a bang, and that will set the status to active. You can say conversation.active question mark, and that will return uh, true if the status was set to active and it will return false if it was not set to, set to active. So let's go look at how we might implement these. So let's do, uh, uh, first let's implement the, um, the bang method which will call the setter with that status. So for each of the values, right? So active is one of the values, archived is one of the values. So for each of the values, we need to also dynamically add a couple methods. We're gonna add the bang method and the question mark method. So here we're gonna say define method and we'll say, uh, you know, key, no, I'm sorry. Um, actually, we need to loop over the values. So values.each do uh, v. 
And for each value, we wanted to find two methods. We wanted to find a, a method for, this, for the bang. So define method, and this is going to be called uh, v with, a, with an exclamation point at the end. And this will result in calling the setter method. So um, we can either call the setter method directly by saying like self.send. And we, we talked about send in a previous uh, video. So we can say self.send um, key equals and the value here. Um, and that should set our value equal to that. So let's try this here. Let's say event.pending bang, and then we'll just print out event status. So if we run this, what do we get? And we get back pending. So calling pending bang updated the status. Let's also, let's just make another call after pending bang, and we'll say success bang, and that should result in having it updated to success. So that looks like it's working. Um, Alternatively, like instead of calling send here, you might have also just called um, the instance variable get, or I'm sorry, the instance variable set. The reason why I wanted to use the send method is if for some reason you wanted to override the that setter, you could do so uh, in the class method, or I'm sorry, in the in the yeah in the subclass, and by calling uh, pending bang and setting the status you could take some other actions that says like, you know, transition some other state or, you know, count up how many things are pending or some such. So this is a little bit more flexible. Um, all right, so let's also define the question mark method, right? So here we're gonna say V question mark. And what V question mark does is it, um, it calls the getter for success and it says, um, give me back the value for the key and if that is equal to V, then it's true. If it's not equal to V, then it's false. So let's see, uh, so we called pending. Now let's call, um, you know, let's uh, put uh, event.success question mark, and it should not be, so this should print false. And then after that, we'll print pending question mark. So we should print false, and then we should print true because the, the status, when we're using question mark, we're asking is the status pending or is this status success? And the first one we're checking, uh, it's false because it's not success. It's true because it is pending, right? And so we're able to sort of like check and see if that is updated. So um, this is one way that you might use the define method uh, tool to do some metaprogramming in Ruby. Um, okay, all right, until next time, we'll see you later.